time we came over, the First World War was still going. And it was quite a, a large camp falling, but not as many, because they moved it to Camp Borden, a lot of it. But uh, I understand before we arrived here, was 50,000 troops went out here to go overseas, and their families used to come over to see them at that time. And uh, of course, the boats came across from Toronto, and there was two or three of them. There was the Cougan, the Chippewa, and the Corona, and I think it was another one, the, the Shikora, or the Canada Steamship Lines. They carry, the Cougan would carry, carry about 2,000 people, and freight that they put it down as a dining room and all that. But if you wonder where these people are saying goodbye to their soldier family would uh, stay in Niagara, but they could go back, come in the daytime and go back at night anyways on the boat. And if they had a, a lot, they'd go from here to Queenston and to Lewiston. But when it came back, they would pick them up and they'd take a late trip, maybe midnight, or not quite midnight, is the early one, I think it was around 9 o'clock. But the point was, there would be so many that they couldn't put any more on, so they have to make a trip back on the late night, well, especially on the weekend. Uh, the commons was the point where they had the troops out there, tents, of course, was a big thing. But uh, we even had some down here, which is now the golf links. I think they go, have got a lease from the government as a government property. And they had trenches all built out there. As a kid, I played around in them, went around to see what they were in dugouts. But you never know that would happen. But they did train some troops down here. The tents came up along in front of the old band on the lake side, and uh, right up they had tents along in there. But anyways, they, all through the town there was stands put up to serve the, the troops, hot dog stands and all the rest of it. And they were quite numerous. I do know that it said it was 50,000 troops went from here. Uh, but the big thing that they brought the Polish people in, like from Buffalo and that, trained for the French army to go over to liberation of Poland. And they were very, very good uh, citizens around, very polite. They come over in their cities and they change over the right into the uniforms. And the problem was it was in the winter time. Of 18, and a lot of them died. The flu epidemic came along that time, and there was a lot of them died. And they have right now in St. Vincent de Paul's churchyard, uh, they were all buried there. They're all there, especially when they got it in place in now. But they used to used to come every every year to, to commemorate their efforts in the war. Well, even in, in that time, you know, the uh, different things came to town. Pat Whiskey, the Polish uh, pianist, he became president of Poland around that time. And he came to Niagara on the trains, and uh, you see the troops. I mean, uh, but they had a band, and they started right from scratch. See, this was the latter part of our band. I don't know if people remember it. The Polish were trained in here. They were also from uh, Buffalo. Yeah. On the American side, there are some Canadian ones too in that they had, it was under the French government. That was another side of it, but the flu epidemic hit in 1918, there was a lot of people. Besides the soldiers that had died, it was an epidemic, which I guess everybody knows about. There was troops were in here, but not to the extent Camp Borden was the military was from Ontario. But they had army in here. I mean, they were still training them here. The RC always came here every summer in the RCDs. They set up the camp. See, in 19, uh, 1955, that they had the Boy Scout Jamboree here, the World War I. Found, I was around there at that time. I think it was here then, mm -hmm. didn't they? That was quite a thing. Was it, it was a world, worldwide. See, normally they were in, the world ones were mostly in Europe in that part of the world, but this is the first time they came out and they picked this place. And they built a stadium, and all kinds of banks and everything else out there. Massive, yeah. yeah. There'd been a lot built out there, then pulled down or moved to whole buildings. A lot of, number after the first world war, I know somebody that was buying that up and they made a house. Well, the houses were built all that. The permanent stuff was never left there. It was really a training camp.